Hi there again. Right, what did I say? You weren't going to see this machine again <laughs> well, on, the, on the video. Only the ones I've already got on the channel. Now, well, I'll tell you what. I uh, took the front panel off again because, you know, I said to you on the left-hand side, there was only a tiny little gap there and the reel was very near. Well, partly the reason was when I moved the Revox reel on the other side, it was fine. The gap was... Uh, pretty large well it was larger than you know with that reel I don't know what's up with that reel I think it's got a warp in it I think it's warped whatever because when it spins around you can see um, it is warped but it doesn't touch yet so I tighten those screws a little bit they're a little bit loose but that's not the main issue but anyway I took that off again the head cover which is a real pig to take off it's really really tough that one the plastic one seemed to come off much easier but this one's really tight and um, took the cover off the face here and what I did I sort of flexed it a little bit flexed it inwards not outwards and it was a little bit um, like bumpy on this side it was you know it was a little bit bumpy it was bumping out slightly so maybe when someone took it off before they uh, put too much pressure or they moved it or carried it and held on to that which you're not supposed to do at all whatsoever you don't uh, touch that bit to um, pull it you know lift it up whatever you can't do that you shouldn't do that anyway so I don't know you know the thing is when you buy a machine you don't know how it's been treated in the past you just don't really have a clue was it whether it was used in a domestic situation or um, a studio you really don't know I mean I don't know the history of this machine at all not one little bit but um, oh, you know what I did earlier on I put the tape on <laughs> afterwards and um, it wasn't playing I thought, what the hell? There's nothing on the tape. It can't be. Well, it was. I'm an idiot. And uh, what I did, I must have accidentally threaded it underneath the uh, the cover there. See that little flap? It was threaded on under there. Oh, what a twit. And then when I rewound it, and I looked underneath that flap there, you could see it was a little bit cleaned off. So that's where the tape was rubbing. I thought, oh, don't tell me. I thought some of the boards went. Because it's got output boards. But... Um, when I press play, oh, I actually turned the uh, the balance knob left and right. There was output. You could hear loud hissing. Then I touched the uh, head contacts, and it was buzzing. Great. And I thought, yeah, well, all right then. So the buzzing's going through. So if the buzzing's going through, there's nothing wrong with the output uh, uh, the boards. So I haven't eaten yet, believe it or not. Ten to three in the afternoon. I haven't had a, nothing to eat. Just one coffee all morning. Again. Yeah, so that's one test you can do. Just touch the uh, contacts on the head, and if you hear buzzing noise, then obviously the output boards are working. If you don't hear anything, then you've got issues. But I thought, well, that's weird. So anyway, um, I rewound it to the end. I found another tape, threaded it on, played perfectly. I thought, hang on a minute. So then I got this tape, thread it on again, fine, perfect. So <laughs> simple little mistakes like that. I mean, even I make them. What the hell, I'm not uh, fallible. Um, uh, is that right? No, I am fallible. We were talking about I'm not fallible. I am. Oh, God. I was going to say another word there, but um, I can't think straight at the moment. I am fallible. Yeah, even I make mistakes. Okay, I wish I weren't fallible and I didn't make any mistakes, but sorry, but I'm a human being and human beings make mistakes. Oh, you know, I forgot to mention yesterday, the feet. Look at the feet. I uh, don't think, did a great job on that, actually. Uh, I was going to file away the screws so the screw uh, shafts wouldn't protrude in the machine because, you know, I said it was rubbing on some of the metal work. Well, what I did, I just put uh, four washers on, on the heads, on the outside of the knobs, not the inside, on the outside. So effectively, what that did, that shortened the uh, screw head. Clever, eh? <laughs> Why not? Right, let me show the feet on this. Let's use that silly torch. Right, see if you can see it. I keep, I've got these shorts on, they keep tearing all the time. Oh, God. Right, I don't know if you can see that. Let's try, there we are. They're quite thick feet on that. See, it's those thick ones. And yeah, so they're screwed on. So they're not gonna come off in a hurry. These ones, what's that there? Oh, that's a bit of plastic from the feet. That's all right, I was wondering where it was. Anyway, there. Yeah, that's the feet I've put on. They were there originally. Well, not the original feet. Still got the original um, 
little rings at the bottom where the Revox little strips, you know, them plastic strips with the little rubber stoppers on the bottom. But uh, there was a set on eBay, but it wanted like 25 quid and five pound postage, 30 quid, not worth it. I'd rather have these, these are solid anyway, these are more solid, very, very solid in fact. You see the back one? Anyway, what I do, what I thought I'd do, just give you a treat, and I've re-recorded the Comfortably Numb, because apparently what I found out is, you can play Pink Floyd songs, and you can play them on YouTube. There's some sort of special arrangement they've got. Um, I think it could be David Gilmore, I'm not sure who arranged that, but whoever arranged it in the Pink Floyd band, thank you very much, because um, I love your music, and I love playing it on YouTube, and I like um, playing your songs on my machines I repair. You're one of my favourite bands of all time, actually, since I bought Dark Side and the Moon in back in 73. Yes, I'm that old. Uh, uh, teenager in 73. Great. Nice era, that. T-Rex and all that. And uh, a few other people I'm not going to mention there because they've been um, vilified now due to uh, certain certain practices they uh, went in for. I'm not going to say any names. But anyway... Right, so I'm going to play you the whole uh, Comfortably Numb. So uh, sit back and enjoy, like I'm going to enjoy it, as I always do.
Wow. Wow. <laughs> what can I say? I didn't want to talk during that song because it's uh, it's just too good. It was too good. I hope you enjoy that. I did. Oh, you know, I just noticed uh, on this machine, on the head cover, there's a glass. Uh, I think Benji mentioned this a while ago because he seems to know his Revoxes. Now there's um, can you see that little Perspex thing. It's like a ring of Perspex. And you can actually see the light coming through from the uh, end of stop lamp under there. There we go. Look at that. That's really cool, that, actually. <laughs> I've never noticed that before. First time. Shame there's not one on the other side. Point. I hate this iPhone. You know what? I need a bigger iPhone. This one is shit. I'm, I think I'm pointing to something I want you to see. And when I play back, it's pointing somewhere else. It's not accurate. It's like the viewfinder's not accurate. You know, like when you've got an SLR camera, a single lens reflex, wherever you point the camera, that's the image you're going to get on the viewfinder, and that's the image you're going to get when you are in reality. But this thing, I don't know, it's shit. The camera is set to one side. It should be smack bang in the middle. But it's not. And um, see, I'm supposed to be pointing that little perspex thing there. So whether you can see this or not now, I don't know. Can you see that one clearly? Is it in the viewfinder? According to my viewfinder here, it's right at slap bang in the middle of the screen. But whether you can see it slap bang in the middle of the screen is another question. I will find out when I play it back. But um, yeah, that is really cool. I have never noticed that before. Huh. So it is a unique machine, this one, the Hammond. So I'm trying to sit down and don't know where the stool is. I'm going to fall flat my back. But there we go. I hope you enjoy that. And I'm going to eat because it's uh, coming up to three o'clock. I've had nothing to eat. Oh my god. Mind you, they say it's good to starve your body now and again. It's good for the system. Hence the term fasting. Whether it's true or not, who knows. But I reckon you should fast your body every now and again. Just go the whole day or oh, just fast all day long. Don't eat anything all day until the evening. I don't know. I might try that fasting technique. They reckon you live longer. It uh, prolongs your life by fasting. Who knows? Well, there we go. Right, I'm going to go now and eat. I don't know what to eat, actually. I don't know what I've got. I'll see what I've got in there. But there we go, yeah. So, um, God, I enjoyed that. That was good. always enjoy Pink Floyd. Oh, yeah, and this morning, I had, uh, when I powered it on, I heard it, I could see the meters. They were fluctuating a little bit, like little bip, 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 just flickering slightly. I thought, what the hell is that? What it was, it was the socket on the back. I've got these leads and I think they're a bit crap. Modern leads, I don't like them. I like the old fashioned ones the best. See, that, is that the right one? Am I pointing the right place here? Who knows? Uh, no, that's the... Oh, I can't see what the freaking hell I'm doing. Yeah, those new leads, they're a bit shit. I like the old fashioned ones, the traditional cheaper ones you used to get uh, thrown in with a cassette deck. Those, they're the ones I like. Those bloody new ones, I don't know. Anyway, it was a bad contact there, so I pushed it in and out a few times and the uh, fluctuations on the meter stopped. So I thought, oh no, I bet one of the boards is going. Yeah, it was just going like this. It was going like a little tremble. And I thought, what the hell is that? So it's perfect, no? So anyway, yeah, bad contacts. It could be my um, phono sockets. You know, they're not fantastic. I cleaned them off and they're much, much better now. And uh, you know, they're not perfect, but there we go, they're okay. So, it, I don't know, it could be the leads, or it could be that actually, no, I don't think it is the uh, the contacts, I think it's the leads because the old fashioned type from the 70s, the one you just saw there, they're perfect. It's these new ones, I don't know, I don't, you can't even grip them right to pull them out. These things you can, but uh, those things, I don't know, it's a bit shit. I might get another set. Oh, I don't know. But there we go. Right. Right, Harvey, shut up now and go and eat. All right, then. Uh, talk to you all later, folks. You never know. I might do another video on this. What I like to do is use my Panasonic uh, SD camcorder. Uh, it takes SD cards and that's stereo. In fact, it's surround sound. So what I could do, I might play this again and uh, film it in stereo because unfortunately my iPhone it's only an iPhone 6 6s I'm using you know and uh, it doesn't record in stereo sound whether the newer models do or not I don't know 
if anyone will let me know in the comments, do later iPhones record in stereo? I'd like to know, because I really do need a phone that can record in stereo, especially when I'm doing all these little demo, demos and that of these uh, machines, especially the stereo machines, not the mono, of course. But yeah, um, yeah, I might do another video. I'll just call it um, Revox, uh, my Revox A77 Mark II, playing comfortably numb by Pink Floyd. And that's it, in stereo. So. All right then, folks, I'm going to go and eat, and I'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.